What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill. Ryan is here today with us along with his Bronco Badlands that's looking a little bit nicer today. He got, he's got some new uh, Fuel Rebels 17 by 9, negative 12. Negative 12. Negative 12 uh, with some Geolanders which are 37, 12 and a half and they look good. So uh, can you fit 37s on a Sasquatch. Uh, this has a leveling kit on it, so it's just level and they do fit. There is a small rub um, at full turn. It just barely rubs the uh, factory rail. So probably just trim that back a little bit. And then it does just barely rub that front corner of the mount for the- uh, Just barely. Just barely, so I mean, it does fit. It will rub just a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, they fit on there and it looks good. That looks good, but that's not what today's video is all about. Today we are ripping this apart and installing a Badlands 1200 pound wench using the Rough Country hidden wench mount. It's going to mount underneath. Uh, they've had this available for a little while for the 2.3s. The 2.7, uh, however, it hasn't been available because there's some modifications because there's an oil cooler right where that winch is going. So they made some modifications, updated the kit some for the 2.7, where we relocate that oil cooler, then the winch should go in there. So we'll see how well it goes in there, see how it fits, and uh, hopefully not break anything in the process. Uh, in order to get to the uh, bumper bolts, you have to remove this plastic, which they did a great job of matching that plastic to the bumper because oh, for the longest time I didn't realize that that was plastic and not the same material until I went to take one of these off. But it's just these little rubber pins like so, pulls out and then a couple of clips behind there and it'll pop right off. And it should just pop out, there's like some uh, clips behind it. but. Uh, yeah, we did this. Part. Three bolts holding each one of these on the front, and once you take those off, that's what's holding that bumper on. For all that, and you got to take the skid plate off too. Okay, so we need to disconnect this charge pipe, so that just pops out. Just pull straight out, mm -hmm. and then you could push down on the tube and disconnect. If you come down here. I didn't know what this pump was for, for, but it's actually a coolant pump to keep, you know, I've never seen an actual pump on a coolant system before, yeah. but it's got one, which is right here, and it's just got a 10 millimeter bolt holding it to the frame. Okay. Yeah, moving this to cool to completely this remove the charge pipe. Yeah. Kind of hard to see but the bottom of that charge pipe we disconnected up top is right down here going into the intercooler and it's got to pop that off and then it should pull out and then the whole charge pipe can be pulled out of here <laughs> Got it. and then just pull straight down one dirty ass charge pipe. so since this is the cooler you need to clamp these before we can disconnect these, you need to clamp these so it doesn't drain the whole system. The instructions say to use uh, some locking pliers, which we don't have ones that'll get a good clamp on that, but we do have these actual clamps and that seem to be fitting on there. And you should do it here or up there. Get it up there so it's a little bit out of the way. And then try to clamp these and then we'll be able to disconnect that. There'll be a little bit of fluid left in the lines, but... Here we go. Still here, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit. So when we move, we don't get it in our faces. Quote unquote, quick disconnect. I don't know if you can see it a little better there, but it's got two sides where you could clip it from behind 
and squeeze it to where you can pull that off. But it's a uh, easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if we just clamp, squeeze that together, should be able to pull this whole thing out, and then it'll be out of the way. Oh. Splash. Splish, splash. Pointing down, it's like these two here, but on the top. And, uh, not super easy to access. There it is. Yeah, you gotta go back. So yeah, there you can get a look at it there. So there's two way uh, oversized bolts <laughs> way too on wide. the top, which is probably the, going to be the same two bolts that are there on the front as well. Okay, I need to read directions. Well, I think we pull this out of the way and we cut these off. Right. Yeah, if you had the two three, it just says oh. cut cut these. But since you have the two seven, it's oh, yeah. trying to tell you, hey, yeah. get all that stuff out of the way first, and then cut these. Oh. We'll go get the saws all and choppy chop. Where he's painting right now is where these mounts used to be. I'm not sure what these mounts are used for mounting because. Now well, it could be a different model, I don't know. Or planned model or something, but yeah, yeah they were. It's nothing. Unless they're protecting these from yeah. the sides. But even the two, well, I guess. Like all of them have them, the 2.7s have them too, but they just don't have this uh, underneath and you gotta, the but they were on there like that. The two gotta, threes. Gotta cut them off and then. Oh, I was like. <laughs> that's the insert there. So yeah, I cut those off, grinded them down, and then just hitting them with some frame paint. So yeah, instead of that pump being basically right here where it was what was where it was at before it's now pushed up out of the way all the way up there there it goes there we go so now let's thread it and take that out so that was a quarter inch hole that was drilled <laughs> and then drive that in there to to tap it and then you need to take the clamp that's right behind your head <laughs> yes this guy um and the bracket that we took off or that you took off for the uh the brake line now he's got that clamp up there and then that gets put into that metal bracket that was over here originally over the, or yeah yeah it was here what this bracket replaced yeah, the brake line that brake line, line bracket it's going to get put in there and then up where he drilled the hole that's going to get mounted and then clamped to that clamp not really easy to see what's going on up here but there's a clamp going over this hose now and that clamp is attached to this bracket which this bracket used to be the brake line bracket down here but got moved up there and then is held in with the self-tapping screw on that cross member that uh drilled into so if that all makes sense and you're following along good job getting rid of about what's that uh, eight inches of extra hose because if you just 
try to shove it up there. It doesn't go out of the way. It just yeah. rub up against your belt and pulley. So. That's seven. So what you tell her eight? That's okay. seven. <laughs> All right. So. Next thing is to, was to cut seven inches of this hose off. And now we uh, got to remove this fitting because this is going to go back on the hose where that got cut off. So in order to do that, we got the uh, uh, cut. Yeah, cut. We got a cut off wheel. Even after it's cut off, it doesn't want to come loose. <laughs> now this quick connect is going to just get pushed back into the hose and I think they supplied what a worm gear to clamp this. Now this kit is not very DIY friendly. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is not your typical uh, you know, afternoon install of just throwing a winch bumper on and yeah. calling it good. There's quite a bit involved. We're cutting hoses, we're cutting uh, parts of the frame off, then having to drill things. Um, so if you're not comfortable with doing those types of things, I, I would not. Uh, not recommend. <laughs> yeah, would not recommend this We've avenue. We've been not wanting to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> days. We've had, he's had this kit for a couple weeks now, and weeks, uh, we keep uh, finding <laughs> excuses to not do this install. <laughs> Busy. So we've been out here all morning, all afternoon, mm -hmm. and uh. We've installed one clamp or one bracket that's come with this kit. <laughs> the rest is bed, cutting stuff apart and moving stuff around on the Bronco itself. So we're trying to figure out what was holding this and there's like a wire or wire loom or clamp something went right through there. Yep. Okay. So yeah, it was just turning turning that around temporarily give you access so you can cut that mount right there and don't cut into the cooler yeah. PSA mm -hmm. easy, uh, easy. yeah this is it's aluminum it's very yeah. soft and it's like that freaking cross member uh, it probably like turned like seven times then went right there yeah. aluminum is much much softer and easier to work cut through than uh, also. Okay. All right, so we ran into a strange one here. Now, we, uh, we get finally starting to get stuff installed. So they have a relocation kit for the cooler. Yeah, you lock it up on there, everything looks great, and then you bolt that up. However, in doing so, there's the shutters on the back of the inner cooler here that, you know, as air blows through, it's gonna push those open. If something's trying to get dirt or anything, it's trying to get back from the backside, it's going to prevent that. But this is definitely blocking that from, you know, this top one opens partially with that. These bottom two rows aren't going to open at all. And we thought maybe we missed uh, some instructions, but then looking in their instructions, it doesn't have this shutter on there. And then I thought about it, I was like, I don't remember ever seeing that on mine either. And we double checked and these shutters aren't on mine. So are these shutters only for Badlands? Does 
do other people have these? Um, I will, obviously we're gonna have to take these to back down and take them off in order to install this. It's installed on a first edition on their page. Yeah. So, I don't know if this is model specific, just his has it or what, but if you have these, it definitely needs to be removed. It's not something that was discussed in the instructions, but in the instructions, theirs doesn't have this. And like I said, uh, on mine, I, I don't have this either. So just uh, interesting uh, find that this Bronco has it, but not apparently not all Broncos do. Okay, so in order to get this out, there's a 10 millimeter bolt up here. And once you get that out, you can push this up. And then this side, you have to just push up and, or this side, you have to push up and then the whole thing pulls out. Now, this is, I, I see where it's stuff, stuff from flowing from the back into your uh, intercooler. And then if you have air blowing through, but yeah, if we would have put that in there like that, he would have had some issues with his uh, turbo temperatures because and now, amazingly, this fits up there so much better now. <laughs> Ignore the uh, <laughs> liquid, everywhere. all the liquid everywhere. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, I can do it by myself. We may or may not have had a small hip mishap with some <laughs> <laughs> with some inner, inner coolant with some coolant, but but yeah, it was, probably would have made this whole job easier if we had taken that off because. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of extra room up back up here to, to work in that we didn't have before so now this is all nice and clear out this fits up here much better not much cleaner so now that cooler's up out of the way the hoses have been shortened so they're not riding up against any of the serpentine belt any of the pulleys anything in there nothing's rubbing everything's tucked away everything we've done up to this point was just to get that cooler up there mm -hmm. out of the way uh so for those two three folks it would have been cut those off and do everything from this point you wouldn't have had to do any of that other stuff to move that cooler up there because you don't have that cooler there to start with if you have the 2.7 uh be prepared to uh fight with that for a little while to get to this point four hours to where now you can actually do the winch install so yeah we had to put a little extra coolant in there Instructions have you uh, go ahead and start the car now and make sure you don't have any leaks. Make sure all the hoses are clear. Make sure there's no problems before you go any further and install uh, the winch and stuff in front. So, drank it down a little bit. Yeah, drank down a little bit. A couple air bubbles. It looks like we're good so now we can actually get to doing the winch install which we started the <laughs> today yeah. uh, to do next steps are pretty simple we got the winch mount tray and then you got the two wings to go on either side and those get mounted with those bolts um, then we actually have to pull the winch out it should fit right there in that cradle. Maybe. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You got it. Uh oh. Yeah. So I put those in as the instructions showed with those bolts facing inward like that. But it looks like they may have to get flipped. And give us a little bit of room because that's a very tight squeeze <laughs> to get that winch in there. So slight change of plans <laughs> that did the trick flipping those bolts around gave it a just enough 
where like Damn. those be- it's like it looks like that winch was yeah, made for that because everything's beveled just to fit inside it's like yeah, that's assuming that the uh, bolt holes line up on the bottom now but <laughs> that yep spot on so yeah the instructions say just flip it upside down and do put the bolts into the bottom square and get the square nut and stick it into the square hole or you throw it <laughs> and then the nut will or the bolt <laughs> easier said than done so then washer lock washer or nut wash lock washer washer <laughs> And into the the nut. Sucker's hot. <laughs> yeah, watch out. The thing's warm. Still not as hot as her fucking brakes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we are. <laughs> we got the uh, the winch. Not the one that goes with it. In place. Just kind of. It's just on the uh, jack up there. And as you can see up on top there is no room whatsoever so on this side you got the handle for the engagement or uh, disengage up here is where the control box panel normally is and over here there's a little bit of space where the wires connect so uh, luckily the control box is removable and you can place it remotely uh would be a rough country winch if you use that uh it has you turn the box sideways which is kind of skinny and then they have that that fits over top on this side um however this winch the uh control panel's a little bit bigger than that <laughs> and it's not going to fit in there this winch that Ryan just had to have <laughs> this control panel is rather huge and that's not going to fit under there anywhere so we are yeah so there you see that thing yeah, there's no. is not small there's no way it's going to fit on top of the mount even if you turn it sideways that that doesn't fit in there right. <laughs> lengthways this is the bracket <laughs> yeah that's the bracket it's supposed to fit on it's uh there's yeah. fits right on top of it yeah right that there. doesn't that's not going to happen so uh we're looking at right here is pretty much the only spot that it's going to fit anywhere in here i think this maybe right. We're fabricators. Yeah, now. so what we're doing is turning this rusty piece of metal <laughs> into a mount. We take we took the brain box out of there. No idea. Is it some we, type of box. Some type of brain box. I think it's ECU, FCU. Yeah. I don't know. Any one of those things that normally sits right here and sticks out on this mount. So what we're doing Yeah, that's normally sitting there just like that. If we did a mount that went over top, it would it would be sitting too high and hit the hood. So what we're doing is we're doing a mount that's going to sit right on top of this and stick out. So that's why we had to cut this down the size that we did so it'll fit in like so then we'll sandwich the brain back on there underneath and we'll have this stuck out we still have to cut this down to figure out the best size to get that on here, yeah. um, to where that will work and then that's going to be yeah Very first try right? yeah so that's going to sit on there like so and then the winch control is going to sit there 
I guess we might do an ARB thing later. I yeah, well, eventually, <laughs> at some point, get some type of support <laughs> underneath that. Which also means, uh, you know, the Badlands winch did come with some extra cables for the relocating the uh, the control box, but those cables are not even a foot long, so uh, we need to get some longer cables to run from the winch up to there. And then there'll also be battery power that runs over to here, then we can ground it. So, uh, all in all to say, uh, <laughs> this right. isn't not going very smoothly, <laughs> but we're, we're getting there eventually. Get this cleaned up, figure out the size to cut it down to, and see uh, and see how we can get this uh, figured, out. figured out and get it mounted in there and see what happens next. So now, got the winch just held up in place uh, with the jack. We need to run the bolts back in. There's some bolts that go back there. It's kind of held up and then you see we ran those three cables. You can't even call them wire, they're cables yeah, at this point. Cables. From, from the top of here um, up and those are going to run to the control. So now I can just continue on follow the instructions for getting this mounted completely. Uh, which involves putting these back on and putting the uh, intercooler piece braces back on but they do since we're going through this thicker piece and dropping it a bit uh, there is a spacer to throw on there kind of like the uh, JKS kit the big wheel kit when we put those spacer in there it just adds a spacer to accommodate for the thicker material that we're using and then uh, everything should bolt up hopefully I'm not going to run all these all the way in just get to make sure they're started like a lock washer like they had on there originally they devised these little <laughs> insert things that you can stick your stick back behind there finally got these bolts in now why they went with this instead of just the insert I don't know I mean it's kind of cool that they give you that but it's not the easiest to get lined up especially with these bolts in the way now had we had them reversed it might have been a little easier but the winch didn't fit so we had to have those backed out so I still think they're fitting that on that yeah it's it, it wasn't perfect alignment but we got it so now retorque these up tighten those and uh and go up top So we're gonna have to run. Wow, so we can install the skid plate after this. Run these wires back and connect them to here. $93 worth of cable. <laughs> yeah, cable. <laughs> to connect from there to there. So yeah, the relocation kit, uh, relocates it absolutely nowhere because <laughs> uh, those cables you can move it from maybe from here to there and that's about it uh, you could turn it from vertical to horizontal and maybe that's about it but yeah making progress slowly so we got our brain er, got everything relocated sitting over here powers run we're wondering well, there's this big thick power wire, but how come there's no big thick ground wire coming off anywhere? And while there is supposed to be one coming off the winch, and there's this thin ground wire that's on the control 
that we got to run to the back of the winch and then connect the big supplied wherever it is ground wire to the pit to the winch problem is um, that connections on the back side of here you can't reach up and over to get to it you can't reach through the back so uh yeah that's something you want to pay attention to before you <laughs> spend an hour trying to get these stupid bolts in uh that you want to make sure you have all the wires not just the top ones but the ground on the back that are, that's even harder to get to than the top ones are going to be so um i think we're gonna yep. not do that tonight yeah. so anyway that's going to wrap it up for tonight we'll catch back up uh some other day when we're putting yeah. we're figuring out how to get that ground on the back of there all right well it is a new day uh it's actually like a week later because he decided since we got to go ahead and take this bumper off um and it's going to be a pain we taking the lights off undoing all the wires that were zip tied to it um since we got to take this off he went ahead and wait he ordered the uh jks big tier big tire clearance kit or whatever it's called um so figured well, let's just do it all at once so waited till that came in uh so now we're going to take the bumper off and yeah we did find that you actually do have to take the bumper off to mount this these upper bolts on this mount uh do mount up underneath and they're up underneath that bumper so you have to at least pull it out and we tried pulling it back some by just loosening the bolts and it wasn't enough to actually get to that so we are taking the whole bumper off while we got that we'll cut the mounts and everything and do the clearance kit and hopefully we can get that ground wiring done on the amp and amp uh winch and it'll all be good to go we've got the winch down got the wiring run that's good to go he uh ryan was shaving down that handle a little bit because it is hitting up against that inner cooler hose so uh shaved that down a bit and then i went ahead take took this body mount bolt out because we're just doing everything That's all. <laughs> and i'm uh, about to cut this off uh this is one place where he is actually rubbing a little bit um not super bad but you know just uh enough that this kit is warranted for the uh tire clearance kit which i did another video for that before i'll put the uh i'll put a link up there uh so you can check that out if you want more details um but basically all we're doing is chopping this off and putting a new body mount bracket on there so it just comes out as wide as the body mount and gets rid of the rest of that horn and then you just cut off the back one as well okay so we've got our clearance kit on here on the front we got the wiring and everything done with the winch the winch back up into position now we are finally back where we almost started <laughs> we could put the uh, front winch plate on into position so we got these mounts here where which would be the forward mount for the um the lower skid plate and then these forward bolts go up here which is hidden under the bumper so you do have to pull the bumper out of the way for these top ones here because those are tucked up underneath at least the uh the mod bumper i'm not sure about any of the other bump the plastic bumper but uh, i was looking for the the bolts to oh, hand I you how oh, you got them so 
So it acts as its own skid plate. So just like that, couple of couple of bolts that you got a hidden winch. Super simple. <laughs> Nothing to it. Nothing to it. So yeah, here's what it looks like from the side and from the front. Now you do have a fair lead that goes on front. Uh, the Badlands one does not fit. That is very specifically made to fit the Rough Country fair lead, which Ryan did order, but for some reason that is uh, back ordered and will be available <laughs> whenever that ship arrives. So he was over here grinding down on the Badlands one to see if he can get it to fit in there a little bit better. I, I mean, that winch is pretty well protected and tucked in there. So there's no way to easily engage or disengage that. Uh, I did see where somebody had put like a big um, pole down through here to it, but that was in a 2-3, I believe. Um, I don't see where that's going to be possible in this. Maybe, but... Maybe. Maybe, or ideally, like Ryan mentioned, uh, just get like a thing like what the water company uses to turn your water on and off out at the uh, curb and just something that you can reach down that'll go over top of that that you can turn. You don't have to keep in there so possibly something to to put together and figure out this sits right up underneath there I and mean, it's 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 snug but it fits perfectly there no need for the put any of those spacers or anything in there bumpers back on i think it looks pretty good all things considered i hope he likes it but yeah i think it looks good especially with the Sorry. clearance kit and all that open all that room for activities you got inside there now <laughs> Yep, yeah, it looks That's good. amazing how much difference that clearance kit makes though. Yeah. Because it's just, it's this, which like, yeah, it looks like a lot, but then when you look with that cut out, that's... Yeah, there's nothing there. Yeah, it's... In this life of the year, but... Yeah, it just, it opens that whole area up completely. You can go bash into rocks and all kinds of stuff now. Hell yeah, yeah. But we got... Big thick ground to go to the negative, big thick red to go to the positive, and that should be the last of everything that needs to be done, and this thing is ready to be operational. So this does have a wireless controller, but I don't know how charged the controller comes. Oh, yeah. Something. Well, something's connected because we got a uh, white, a little light thing that we're wired on there. In, out. This is on the bottom. We'll need a. Yeah. Go out or in? You can come out a little bit more. Go back in. Guess what? You got a working witch. Woohoo! I can pull you out. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can pull each other out. We gotta have a winch tug of war. <laughs> we are winches. Yes. Well, no, that is, uh. Well, that is very cool. But it is a lot of work. 
Yeah, that is not the easiest job in the world. Uh, if you have, if you want to do the hidden winch and you have the 2.3, good on you. If you have the 2.7, uh, 2.7 engine, it's going to be a little bit more work. And I would recommend going with the Rough Country winch that is recommended by Rough Country to work with this. Otherwise, you are going to be in for uh, two days of work. A little bit of extra work uh, running some wire and fabbing up a mount and uh, all that fun stuff. So if you want to avoid all that, then use the winch that they recommend. Or if you don't mind doing all this, then you can fit a 1200, uh, Badlands 1200 in there. It just uh, takes a little extra a little extra twiddling. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, so but it works. So finish cleaning up. Then we still got to do the rest of his tire clearance kit. Kit. Well, like I said, uh, I've already done a video on that. If you'd like to see that more, de more information on that is in the description. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this winch install. Uh, hopefully we'll get get out on the trails and see how useful it is here before too long but it uh it is it's cool it's definitely a project though so i hope you guys liked it i know this video is probably hard, all over the place because we did film it over a couple of days and started a couple projects in the middle of this project <laughs> But um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time.